just wanted to just go over just a little bit about how I first came to work on you and just some of the things that you were going through through when we first met. Okay. Um, I, back in 2018 on Christmas Day, um, I woke up with excruciating pain um, in my right leg. Um, it was low back pain and pain down my right leg. Um, come to find out through several months of trying to figure out well, what was wrong, um, I had an MRI done and my L5 was herniated, and it is herniated. Um, and it took about several months for me to get to a point where I was functioning. Um, it wasn't normal, but I, I was definitely functioning. Um, I was bedridden for about a month. Um, during that month, I would uh, come see Dr. Ed um, about once or twice a week. Um, just so that he can work on me so that I could get back to living a normal functioning life um, and it took a while it was a lot of pain the pain was excruciating um, I went to the hospital <laughs> could you share just some of the history before I saw you just about what you've been through in life and yes I can remember back when I was about 10 to 12 years old I had a trampoline accident um, I was jumping on the trampoline it was raining um, and my cousins and I were playing a game of who could jump the highest and furthest off the trampoline onto a blue tarp. Um, and so I did jump. Um, I did not land on my feet. I landed on my bum. And so that was the injury that I remembered, the, the first injury I had. Um, and then I started playing basketball. And I played basketball all through high school, pretty dedicated to it almost every day of my life. Um, so I'm sure that had some effect into um, the final injury as to what I was feeling. Um, and I didn't feel the sciatica or the back pain uh, going through high school or even after high school um, until December, uh, Christmas Day of 2018 was when I woke up with that excruciating pain down my right leg. This adjustment's a little bit more modified. We're just going to roll to our side a little bit. There we go. Instead of doing a sit-up, we don't want to stress out that lower back as little as we can. Take one deep breath in for me. Exhale. Breathe in deep for me. Exhale. Good. Breathe in deep for me. One more. Exhale. There we go. Let it all go. Let it all go. Good. All right. Stand it for me. I got you. Turn your left a little bit. Here we go. I got you. Yeah. A little tight today. Yeah. And your work is mostly sitting for most of the day? It is, yeah, mm -hmm. sitting for eight hours. And how many years have you been working at um, the hospital? It's going to be five years coming into uh, November of this year. Okay. Anybody that, you know, obviously that's sitting, that makes us lose our curve in our lower back, starting at five years old, you know, from five till 20, and then going into the workforce, sitting causes that arch in our spine to get becomes straight and then the more straight that curve becomes all the weight starts going down to the lower back and you don't feel half the spine that cartilage that we saw on the MRI that was injured you know that cartilage has no feeling until it finally hits the nerve it's it's tough because like you were saying you know Ed I was fine up until <laughs> Christmas Day I was I, I didn't have any recollection you know or, you know conversation with my spine and that's very typical uh, because nerves are, like I said, they go they're one millimeter to heaven and then one millimeter <laughs> to hell. And so it's just about transferring the burden off that area. And then sort of the rest of your life, we have to learn how to use the other parts of your spine that are very healthy. That was the most remarkable thing I remember about your MRI was that there was one segment that was, I'm going to say it's, it looked like 70 years old, you know, or 80 years old. It was much older than you are, but the good news was that most of the spine, every other segment in the spine was 18 years old, you know, relatively brand new. And if we can just access it, so why didn't those other parts of the spine age? Well, my opinion is that they're not moving. If something doesn't move, it doesn't age. We age in the parts of the spine that are over bending. And so um, trying to restore the mobility of all those young areas takes the pressure off that one, it's just one guy. It's like one tooth in your mouth that's busted. You know, and just like a tooth, if you have a cavity or a, you know, root canal, or I'm not a dentist, but you know, <laughs> if, you, if you damage a tooth, there's really no undoing yeah. that. And so it's, uh, people might ask, you know, how often do you have to get adjusted, or why do you have to keep coming back? Well, 
you know, first of all, her spine isn't the same as it was before. Um, you know, maybe if we started care at a young age, we could not have to come in that often, you know, and it's sort of a, you know, now we're having to deal with an injury that really doesn't have the ability to go back to pre, you know, cracked status or pre-injured status, and so it's just a, it's tough. Yeah, I think that's the most interesting part is uh, just learning to live with the spine that is injured. Um, you know, using the tools uh, that you've provided and the information you've given me is just, it's just changing the way you live, you know, trying to live the normal life, but mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. just keeping in mind that sp spine injury is always in the back of my mind. You know, yeah. am I doing this? Am I sitting okay? Am I standing the correct way mm -hmm. to, to just relieve mm -hmm. um, the pressure and just to um, avoid injuring the back again? Yeah, being aware of your spine. I think of it like, you know, if you eat a piece of fish, you're always aware in the back of your mind that there might be a bone. <laughs> you know, you don't hopefully yeah. push the you put food in your mouth and then immediately chomp down real hard. You're yeah. kind of test out. And so with right. your back, it's, you know, being aware of L5, being aware of um, having a conversation with your middle back. And that's where the, we're, we're going to go over the dental rolls again. And just, you know, she does, Sandra's done a great job of just participating daily with her middle back, uh, keeping it loose. When she has to sit at work, or you know, when she has to, when she has time off, she's not reclining; she's laying down. I've caught her at her house. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I see you over there I'm laying down. And that's good. There we go. All right. There we go. You know, I have kids that come in here that are, you know, 12, 13, 14 years old, and you know, I ask them how many hours a day they sit. And, you know, 14, 15 hours a day. You know, sitting is becoming more and more progressively, you know, larger as our society is becoming more and more, you know, technological and, and that starts changing our posture more and more forward and our parents' generation didn't spend as much time sitting. So the entire purpose of this adjustment is to loosen up the sacroiliac joint, or SI joint, and it's very easy when you're doing this adjustment or when you're learning how to do this adjustment as a chiropractor that just the loose parts of the spine move. And so I caution heavily anybody with severely injured lower back, they have to be very careful. And, and I don't think we even did this adjustment for quite a long time yes, before. Yeah. But there's a lot of benefit to loosening the SI joint. Um, even though she has an injured L5, we leave L5 alone. We just try to adjust the joints around so we're gonna real gentle, take a deep breath in, and exhale. There we go, it's okay, I got you. Good, come on, it's good. Take one deep breath in, hands in your belly, look over the shoulder, exhale, I got you. A little bit, that's all we need, that's all we need. Very good, very good, so now we go face down. All right, there we go. Just keep breathing in your nose, out your mouth, there we go. One year I was at a seminar with, I don't know, 500 chiropractors in a room, and the chiropractor was the chiropractor for George W. Bush and the Pentagon, and, oh, wow. you know, every first few minutes of a seminar, it's, you know, the guy gives his resume to help us understand why we all should listen to him and <laughs> why he's the expert. And anyway, so he, somebody asked the question with essentially your exact case, Sandra. They asked, mm -hmm. you know, what do you do in a case with a person with a disc injury and sciatica, and how would you adjust this patient? And, he responded and said that he would put them on their side, you know, and, and adjust L5, you know, not the SI joint, but the right into the lower back. He said, if pain radiates down the leg, don't do it again. If pain stays in the lower back, do it again. Um, in both scenarios, I would make an argument that he probably injured the lower back. <laughs> that <laughs> if you have a disc injury and you hit the wire, the, the nerve going through the inter intervertebral foramen, that's going to cause a shooting pain down the leg. And if you overstress the joint in the lower back, that's going to give you local pain in your lower back. So I about fell off my chair, and I looked at some of the guys I graduated with in the room, and I, you know, is that what you guys do? Is it, you know, the person comes in with lower back disc injury, just put them on their side, and 
you know, hit them real hard at L5. And, and the guys all that I graduated with were like, yeah, sounds good. I'm like, guys, and I said, they say, I explained the same thing. I mean, what if they have an injury in there? And, and this was a known L5 injury. This is, it wasn't like the person just came in with symptoms. This was, we have an MRI showing a L5 disc herniation. Anyway, so at the end of the seminar, I went up to the front and there was, you know, a dozen chiropractors waiting to ask questions to this chiropractor and I waited my turn and he looked at me and I, you know, in so many words I said, you know, what do you think of the idea of not adjusting L5 but working around the area that's injured? You know, would you think that might be a... And I was waiting for the, you know, smackdown. I was waiting for him to tell, oh no, you have to adjust the subluxation. You have to adjust L5. But he actually like somewhat was like, yeah, I've thought about it. I've thought about working around the area and I've seen some success in that. And, and all the other chiropractors looked shocked. They were like, all looking at me like, what's this dumb young chiropractor thinking? And like the next day I ended up talking to him a little bit longer and he was asking me what I did in my practice and what exactly how I, how I, my philosophy was. And, and I, he was, and I was like, why didn't you at least mention that when there are 500 chiropractors were in the room, you know, to not manipulate the yes. injured area. And I, it really, you know, somewhat you know, gets me apprehensive or, you know, scared for some people. And I have stories, you know, and maybe some people get relief working on the injured area like that. I just, I've seen too much success working around it and just diverting pressure, you know, having, like I said, I use the word conversation to mean, you know, there's, I think of your vertebrae, like an employee of a, you know, your, your business, you know, and you have to check in on your employees, see if they have what they need. You know, you don't just ignore your yeah. <laughs> employees. You have a conversation um, as your back gets stiffer, you feel better. And that's what proceeded when you finally first felt that, you know, sciatica was that your back was probably really, really tight up here. And yes. I remember first working on you, it was super tight. I remember you about wanting to punch me yes. <laughs> yes. When, I, when I first started working on your middle back because, oh my gosh, Ed, that's unbearable. I, I, I can't handle that. It's so stiff in there. It's the pain level is, I, I can't take it. And, um, that's the area not bending. It's like a finger knuckles in here. And if they don't bend up here, then another area has to overbend. And so I think of it, I wish I had the technology to like give you a printout of your spine in terms of say 0%, you know, no mobility, 100% full mobility, and then, you know, higher percentage, you understand is more mobility. This would be working at like 500%. Get the idea? Uh -huh. And this is working, when I first met you, this is working at 10%, you know, 20%, and 15%, you know, and so... My goal is to get the numbers that are, you know, 10 or 20 percent mobility. Get the idea, right? Yes. Get them to 100 percent or even more, and then reduce the area that's at 500 percent. Let's bring that down to 50 percent or, you know, some low number, uh, and that'll, you know, markedly remove the pain and stress on that joint. You know, you don't get to. We've talked about. You don't get to choose where your back bends. It's not under conscious control. Like, let me let me think about this. When I get in my car, when I, you know lean to grab something let me make my middle back bend right it's not under our conscious control it's a volunteer structure and so by working and adjusting on sanders middle back we keep this area functioning now how often does she have to get adjusted well i mean i for sandra i you know i think twice a week is a good number because we have a, such a significant injury at the bottom and maybe one day we'll be able to get to once a week and we can try going less and less but I think we tried going down a little bit and it yes. was it was getting a little you know it started talking a little bit too much and I don't like I don't we don't need to live in that place yeah. um very good I'm just gonna work this a little bit harder here there you go tough Ooh, she's gotten tough mm -hmm. <laughs> she used to be at the beginning you know I was pushing lightly and Sandra would be you know and then now it's like I'm sweating back here and <laughs> Yes, I do remember the first couple mm -hmm, times mm -hmm. I was, mm -hmm. uh, I, I wanted to um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. give you a good punch. Yes, I do want to go back to the whole mm -hmm. where we were doing, um, I was coming into seeing you uh, mm -hmm. twice or once a week mm -hmm. and I could definitely start feeling that. Mm -hmm you know my back was it was just i felt just weaker and i felt like my upper back like you said it wasn't talking and mm -hmm. it was talking to my low back and there, there was no conversation going on and that's where um you know we decided going coming mm -hmm. for me to come in twice a week mm -hmm. um which i think has definitely mm -hmm. helped maintain mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. um, but yes i can definitely feel the difference between once a week to two two times a week yeah, everyone's spine's a little different and so 
it's almost like a multivariable equation on you know how often someone needs to get seen i i kind of steal from you know i think it was the was it the sleep number right everybody's got a different number their mm -hmm. bed setting or something you know i call it the chiro number the number of days that you can go between adjustments um, where everybody's still working properly that makes sense and so you know some patients if they've started from a young age they might be able to go 40 days you know between adjustments um you know if they if you first see a chiropractor as a teenager maybe maybe it's 30 you know if you wait till you're 30 till you see a chiropractor maybe it's 10 or 15 i don't it's it's not a simple answer of how often someone should get seen it's i think the best way to know is using that dental roll you know if you you'll find that after an adjustment your back will stretch more easily and then as you go longer past your adjustment it might get more and more difficult and then when you notice that hmm i really don't really want to stretch my middle back it's getting too rigid because i'm sitting a lot during the day my back is hardening down it's becoming too painful to stretch and i would use that as a criteria for getting care Does that makes sense way before you have any type of reoccurrence or re-exacerbation of the sciatic symptoms we use the mobility of her middle back as the checkpoint whether this is functioning or not it's just like a finger knuckle if it if it bends easily there's no pain it's only if the joints don't bend where oh my gosh ed that really really kills me and so the stiffness in here directly correlates with the discomfort and the apprehension and you know, oh my gosh, Ed, don't, you know, right there, that right side right there, the little lump, mm -hmm. right there, it's, usually, I think we named them after, you know, boyfriends, maybe, ah, uh -huh. no, don't you, uh -huh. usually give them a little personification, uh -huh. but, uh, yeah, right there. So you yeah. are finding the spots, yep. Doctor. Yep. Yep. It's just <laughs> keep to keep combing. Just got it. Might be able to see it. Just kind of like a little bit of a bump right there, and that's what I'm trying to. You know, how long do you stay on it? Well, until I until it starts to release a little bit and untangle. It's protection. Yeah, they're old injuries. You know, from that. You know, was it trampoline? You said. Yes. You know, the trampoline injury. Something happened. See, in a healthy spine, your middle back functions first. So when you compress a healthy spine, the, the first vertebrae that are designed to function receive the force. So when we're young, the middle back gets injured first. And then, you know, perhaps we remember it vaguely. You know, it may be, oh, yeah, I remember my middle back hurting, but then it just stiffened down and I forgot about it. You know, typical American walk it off, <laughs> you know, mentality. Yeah. And then a decade, 15 years later, we have the, what we call the compensatory pain because your alignment shifted, this area no longer mechanically participated, and then your lower back had to become hypermobile. So the hypomobility in here created a hypermobility at the bottom. Yeah, right there, that's where there's going to be. Mm -hmm. So any areas of congestion right in here, um, because there's so much tightness in here, there is not good circulation. So think of it like a hard ball. It's like the blood vessels have a hard time pushing blood into these high pressure regions. I think of it like Mount Everest, you know, it's not a high traffic zone, <laughs> you know, it's not. Yeah. And so because it's so tight, um, the cellular exhaust called lactic acid more easily gets trapped in these areas. And when lactic acid gets trapped in the areas, you sort of, you'll see it come out as that little mark or petechiae or the, the gua sha mark. It's never normal, the gua sha mark. And, you know, if we, if, if this area was fully clean and you know didn't have any restrictions at all I wouldn't be able to make a mark on you Sandra you know there'd be no and we've gotten pretty close to that where yeah. <laughs> I'm just it feels like nothing even happens the, the mark is never normal um, you know I, I, I couldn't quote unquote burst blood vessels even though it's not blood vessels bursting it you know because how could I why can I only create a mark 
where there's tension and restriction, and then it directly correlates with where Sandra feels the most, <laughs> you know, restriction and pain. Yeah. And uh, there we go. This might be a good example of it. You know, this is. I've worked on Sandra enough that, you know, if any marks that I do get are going to be, you know, pretty mild. When we first did this, it was like just dark everywhere. <clears throat> and as the spine becomes cleaner and the, the internal circulation, you know, it's almost like a rumba vacuum. It's supposed to be self cleaning, you know. You shouldn't have to be manually vacuuming everywhere. And um, that's part of what the stretching maintains. The stretching maintains that mobility which keeps that self-cleaning machinery operating. And then usually only in the maybe the way the worst spots, like right there a little bit. But I if you, you go back, I mean I probably I combed this, Sandra, right? Way more than I combed that. And the oh, mark yes. came out right here. So why yeah. why is the mark darker? It's there's more in there. Um, the mark really only comes out where there's acidity. It should just become pink. Uh, the, you know, the flushing of the tissue you know, very transiently, but when you have that mark that lasts for days, that's uh, toxins that are trapped in the area. People go, what do you mean toxins? My liver and kidney take care of toxins. Well, lactic acid is a waste product. Lactic acid is what the whole purpose of breathing is to bind oxygen to lactic acid to form carbon dioxide and water. So lactic acid is, is, an, is an acidity in the tissue that irritates nerves. You know, we call that a toxin. It's a waste product. Um, it's cellular exhaust. The after glycolysis and Krebs cycle, lactic acid is the last thing that's formed. And why is there so much lactic acid? Well, there's guarding, there's tight muscles in here. That's what's, it's like an engine running at a higher RPM, right? So if you have a car, it's supposed to idle at, you know, 700 RPMs or so, right? But if you have it idling at 5,000 RPMs, <laughs> it's going to be producing a lot of exhaust out of the tailpipe. And so part of this is the body's uh, guarding mechanisms in here. Very good. You okay? Yeah. All right, doing, doing great. Doing great. <laughs> I mean, just real quick, some right there on that left side. You know, so you'll see. I mean, my my pressure's even over all the tissue. <laughs> you know, but you'll see the marks only coming out where there's something internally. I think that like a clog. You know, it's. Not so lateral, Ed. Not way over there. <laughs> Very things over there. Mm -hmm. You know, my siblings and I have grown up with a father who's taught us from a young age how to be aware of our spine, you know, and how to you know, prevent us, you know, from you want to say going through things that would add injury or stress to our spine. I remember playing soccer. We were talking about soccer earlier, you know, and my dad saw a slide tackle and a kid busted his ankle. It was the last day I played soccer. And I was like, you're done. I was like, Dad, I really like playing soccer. You know, and the kid hyperextended his knee and busted his ACL. And, you know, my dad's like, nope, nope, you're my retirement. No, no, son. That is really sore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Now, why would that be so sore? They're just, there's, there's main joints I want to clean are the facets or the, the mm -hmm. zygopophyseal joints along your spine, and these are the interlocking joints in your, between the vertebrae. Now, you have these rib heads over here, and the, there are joints at every rib attachment on the side of your spine, and then you have muscles all over here, and so part of this is muscle, lactic acid, you know, trapped in here. You know, when we're, when we're sitting, these areas aren't needing to really move that much. You know, people are like, well, I walk. 
I ride a bicycle, I go, well, that doesn't really make this area really need to move that much. And if anything, you know, I remember watching a video about, was it Michael Johnson, that, that runner that won the Olympics in the 90s? You know, his, his chest stays completely immobilized when he runs. And they were, he was analyzing Usain Bolt's running and how his, Usain Bolt actually could be faster <laughs> if he had better technique. You know, but the whole purpose in running is to keep your chest as immobilized as possible so that your hips, does that make sense? Okay. Pivot as quickly as possible. Okay. Uh, and that's what, I, I'm not a runner, but I'm sure it's, it's just, that's the technique you want. Yeah. No wasted mobility. You don't want to waste any lateral movement up here that would take away from your, your arms and your legs mobility. And so there's not many things that we do that really encourages this area to really move properly. Um, like I said, breathing, not, we tidal breathe through the top of our lungs. Does that make sense? How often do we really take a real deep breath in throughout our day, right? Not that often. No. And so um, there's a lot of stiffness that just accrues in here and builds up. And there we go. And then you notice it when I start working on it. And yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> the bra is a brassiere also that stiffens your middle back, right? And so for decade or whatever you know you've been wearing a brace on your middle back and so it's part of what binds this area and makes it you know it binds the ribs right so there's pressure on your ribs that constricts the mobility right so that again allows it more of a congestion in guys it's usually a little bit lower sometimes we'll get it more where the trap attaches um, lats quadrace lumborum more of a t12 women's a little bit higher usually uh, but Unless you're, you know, doing yoga, right, or swimming, yeah. you know, things that really require a, a, a deep range of motion, you know, um, you know, Ed, I drive a car for a living, or I sit and then I, you know, cook dinner, and like, well, your these joints weren't really being asked to move that much, <laughs> you know, you didn't fully like in yoga they do half moon, which you bend all the way to one side, right, and then you bend all the way to the other side. Like I said, I've combed all of this evenly, right, and <laughs> you'll see the mark come out just where there's the most restriction. So why isn't, you know, I, I combed here, <laughs> but if there's nothing in there, no mark will come out. You know, so very good, very good, Sandra, you're doing great. Looks great. You okay? Yes. Doing good, okay, you're doing great, doing great. Everything, the original tissue was all organized and lined up and then it tears and it heals like that and so the goal of this is to sort of comb the tissue to get it somewhat back to the original way the fibers were laying uh, the muscle fibers the ligament fibers you want them you know untangled increase your range of motion as when you're doing yoga or doing your stretches on your dental roll you'll be able to you know and it's getting easier and easier All right, so the goal here is to Loosen this SI joint. The SI joint's the most powerful joint in your body. It's sort of like the Goliath. <laughs> you know, it's a four inch long joint, right? And then the joints in your spine are, you know, half inch. You know, it's, ones in the neck are even smaller. And so you have these small little joints in the spine. And so the SI joint, if this joint, even though it only has a very little range of motion, what it can do is mainly through its size and the power of that joint and so in this area when we sit gets locked down um, and then we lose the mobility of the SI joint and that's again what's throwing the burden to L5 there we go oh no not there Ed <laughs> uh -huh. so I can feel it that's the mark I mean, like I said there'll be a mark potentially right there because there's a yeah there's a spasm right there right there I and feel it the patient the patient will tell me where the marks will come out it's when I call my black belt patients, patients that have, you know, sort of been used to having a conversation with their spine, right? And they know, it's like when your car is clean, you notice that it gets dirty, you know, or you notice when it's dirty. Uh, if, it cars, if your car is filthy all the time and then it gets a little dirtier, you don't notice the difference, right? Because, you know, it's already dirty. And so, like, I, I washed my car the other day and it got, and then pollen got on it and I was like, oh! <laughs> but if I hadn't washed it, I probably wouldn't have noticed the extra pollen on the car. So... As you clean your spine, you, you're more aware of when it gets. It's like maybe you're like your teeth also. Like when you when you clean your teeth, you notice when they get grimy or dirty more easily than if they were just <laughs> already dirty and they get a little dirtier. Um, okay, here we go. Okay. Not 
too much. It's getting it's getting flushed. Shouldn't get that red, but That helps to increase the replacement rate by bringing blood in, helps to speed up the healing process. So healing really is the word replacement. Your body doesn't really heal. It creates new tissue. The old tissue is removed. We term that healing. And you know, many patients might ask me, I don't, I don't feel like I'm healing. Well, you're either damaging yourself faster than your body can replace, right? Or there's no circulation in the area, right? There's, so there's no, no nutrients able to come in. Perhaps your diet, right? You don't have any nutrients in your food. Right, and so this is where having a good diet, also balanced diet, comes into play. But you know, the nerve also controls this tissue. So if the nerve here is pinched, the health of this tissue sort of degrades a little bit. Sort of like if you had a tourniquet on your arm, it cuts off the blood flow to your arm, right? And so the arm would atrophy and weaken. So in the same way, if you just like you cut off the blood flow to this area, if you cut off the nerve flow, that also causes the tissue to not heal properly, feel more sore, inflamed. It doesn't. You know, the functionality of the tissue comes from the nerve. There you go. Very good, though. Very much better. Mm -hmm. I got you. Mm Oh, I'm nine for ten. You're gonna leave me. You're gonna leave me with that one big toe. Sorry, I'm not gonna let you have it. Jeez. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Not today. Not today. All right. All right. Let's see. There we go. I got you. There we go. Hey. There we go. Couple more moved after we coerced everything. Ice cream, man. Yeah, just like that. Yeah. yeah. So soft in here now, that's what we want. There you go, breathe. There you go. So the rest of her life, this is how we can at home sort of emulate the work that I do on the table by counter stretching the forward stretching that we put our spines through all day long. We call it mirror image stretching. So we take her to the opposite extreme. And so a question might be, well, Ed, she sits 10 hours a day. How is 20 minutes on this stretch gonna it have any chance of undoing it? Well, as Sandra will attest, this is bending your back as far as she can go. Right? Yes. I'm asking her to go segmentally. Each of these joints are compressing as far as they can go. So we're asking for extreme extension to balance, hopefully, just mild flexion. So she's not sitting at work with her knees on her chest. She's, you know, sitting uh, mildly flexed. So when, yeah. and then when she has to sit at home or at work, you know, I get it, out of restaurants or at work, you know, I recommend that she have something with her, you know, when needed, but as much as possible, you know, not make it awkward or 
What's that thing you have with you all the time, Sandra? What is that? <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a support. It's a support. Yes. It's, it's, a, it's an awareness that I don't want, if I have to go to a movie theater and sit for two hours or three hours or whatever, that she has something available to take the stress off her lower back and place it on her middle back. And uh, that's going to you know, take her throughout life. It's going to take you the whole way. You'll be okay. <laughs> and I'll be here. And just how did that hot yoga go? The hot yoga? Um, it actually was very interesting. It was very difficult at first. Um, and then uh, my sister and I had started going um, consistently once a week. And it was night and day. Mm -hmm. it, it helped tremendously. In between the times of coming to see you, I would do the hot yoga. And it was... It, it definitely helps. I could definitely feel, I did feel as tight throughout the day. And like you said, the, the half moon, it definitely moves the places where you don't usually move throughout the day. So it definitely did, it definitely did help. Let me see, my dinner roll has come everywhere with me. It's been to Mexico, it's been uh, out in Miami. Um, it's it's been it goes everywhere with me work home car everywhere it's your wilson <laughs> it is my wilson <laughs>